Proverbs chapter 13. Let's start from there tonight. Proverbs 13 verse 15. Just to share a few things to prepare our hearts and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 13. I want to quickly just run us through a few and please let me have our attention especially for those of us in the overflows outside. A few reasons why many people especially believers experience perpetual defeat perpetual failure perpetual triumph of darkness over their lives in spite of their sincerity in spite of their godliness supposedly in spite of their passion and commitment for God what exactly is responsible for perpetual seasons of delay hardship lack of breakthrough because i understand that in a meeting like this is a miracle service not just a healing service there are people here who may not be sick but there are situations that require only the ability of god so i want you to listen very carefully proverbs 13 verse 15 i thought we have it projected i like us to read together one to read good understanding uh-huh but the way of transgressors is hard the b part again please but the way you see the word transgressor there does not just mean a sinner it means a violator a violator of a principle the bible did not say the way of transgressors is impossible he said it is hard Herein lies the mystery of hardship. The mystery of perpetual pain. Pain that makes the Bible look like a lie. Pain that makes the testimony of Jesus look like a lie. We've been taught again and again that it is never all up to God and it is never all up to men. When it has to do with establishing realities in this kingdom, there is always a partnership, a responsibility as defined by God and a responsibility that represents the trust and the commitment of men. The Bible says that the way of violators, whether through ignorance or through the hardness of heart, violators of God's principles, the Bible says their way is hard. The Lord has declared for us as a people, as a family of faith, that this is our year of triumph. And um, we must explore once again the keys that are responsible for speed, joy, perpetual victory. The Bible says, now thanks be to God who causes us always, not sometimes, always to triumph. A great man of God said, challenges are not unusual. But when you are defeated by them, then it becomes unusual. Are we together now? Number one, the first reason that I put down here that is responsible for the pain, the tragedies, the failure, the defeat of many people, families, territories is the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. The conscious exclusion where you exclude the Lord Jesus, his purposes, everything that has to do with God. The conscious exclusion of Jesus Christ in their lives and affairs. John 15 from verse 4 to 5. John 15 from verse 4 to 5. Jesus said something. He said, um, please give it to us very quickly. John chapter 15 from verse 4 to 5 it says abide in me read it people of god want to read abide in me and i in you uh-huh it says as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except hold on the branch as powerful as the branch is does not sustain capacity to bear fruit in itself except it abided in the vine then he says, no more in that similitude. No more can ye except you abide in me. Verse 5. 
He says, I am the vine. No confusion. You are not the vine. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Then he says, he that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And here is the mystery. For without me, outside of me, apart from me, ignoring me, claiming I am not important, he says, ye can do nothing. He didn't say ye can do little things. Outside of me, ye can do are we together now? The first reason, believe me, brothers and sisters, behind the untold hardship of people is their conscious exclusion of Jesus Christ, his purposes and his ways. Dr. Anointed, God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. We honor you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Jesus Christ. You know, we live in a society that... Um, I'm not against intellectual development. We have series and series upon um, on those thoughts. I'm not against wisdom, education, strategies and all of that. But you see, there is this fallacy that our generation has. It's called the over-dependence. Over-dependence on intellectualism over dependence on the wisdom of men the strategy of men we claim as though being educated is a substitute to acknowledge and acknowledging and walking with jesus christ and the bible says for without me ye can do nothing over dependence on our abilities i can pay the rent i'm, I'm educated i'm not i'm not daft I can do this, I can do that. And every time you claim to be able to live without Christ, and what is civilization? We have represented Jesus to be a nuisance to civilization. Every time you mention him, every time you say anything, people feel, look, you are falling our hands. This is an intellectual gathering. This is a gathering of smart people. This is a gathering of business minds. This is a gathering of people who know what they are doing. They are, don't, don't spiritualize. Don't bring us. We are not in church. You hear them. Jesus said, for without me, regardless of the platform, you ignore me and ignore what I represent in your life. He says you can do nothing. Are we together? Over dependence on everything. Oh, I think I, I know so so and so in the Senate. I know so 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 and so in the National Assembly. I am connected to the presidency. I am this and that. The over dependence on our abilities, our human strength. And then, of course, pride. We're still talking on point one. Self-glorification. What is pride? Pride is the refusal to acknowledge God and his might and his ability as being the reason for your result. The ashamedness to acknowledge Christ the ashamedness. You know, we live in a time and a generation where we as humans, we love the applauds of men. And there's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact that sometimes we are so carried away, it embarrasses us to ever let men know that Jesus is the doer of this. So we love it being said it was Joshua Selman. He spoke a word and someone got 320, 305. He spoke a word and a dead person came back to life. We love those kinds of things. It is in our human nature to want praise so much to the extent that if it means kicking God out as a nuisance to our space of relevance, we will gladly do it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7, this is what it says. Trust in the Lord. Listen, with all not some your heart he says and to lean not on your own understanding then he says in all your ways acknowledge him and she shall direct your path right the next verse says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil pride
pride this is a big mistake that we make as preachers it's a big mistake that we make as leaders business people parents this is my child i train this child by my wisdom you can't embarrass me ah. listen let me tell you something master the art of letting men see god in your life i show you a secret to unstoppable lifting and i the bible says if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw men i will draw men when your heart is stayed on letting men see christ at work in you then john 17 becomes your testimony it says the hour has come glorify your son to the end that your son may bring glory to you it does not cause god anything to lift men but the issue here is our pride apostle joshua selman see and all those things kill us and destroy our lives forever in my life and in this ministry he remains the doer we honor him unashamedly it is the foolishness that has brought us thus far the foolishness of acknowledging him all the time you know every time i sit and i hear the testimonies sometimes you just see me keep quiet and um, i can see people looking at me putting their hands on their heads and i'm saying you are looking at the wrong person the only reason why i'm the only one you can see is because you cannot see him and i've taught you like a faithful bride when when come wife when i take good care of this woman and you clap for her a wise woman will point back to her husband is that true yeah remember wives submit right so when the invisible husband in partnership with him you are producing supernatural results but the world cannot see him so it is you they see as a wife and then they thank you and then a wise wife will transfer it back because the only reason why Vashti was queen was because she married the king when she forgot and decided to carve out a niche for herself she was sent out and a villager called Hadassah a type of the church came in her innocence and instantly became queen and forever she acknowledged him she lived to serve the king in that palace and she served the victory of the nation of Israel acknowledgement several people find it a, an embarrassment to say lord you are the doer sometimes we say it religiously but when they look at you they know you don't mean it what you just mean is okay god so you it doesn't look like i'm fighting you i acknowledge him take him out of my life i'm not ashamed it's, it's a state i have maintained for a very long time hallelujah you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my all seeking you as a precious joy not to give up, I'll be a friend. You are my own. Hallelujah. Pride. Pride. Number two, quickly. The second reason why people do not experience the outstretched arm of God in their lives is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Please listen very carefully. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. The systems of the kingdom. The kingdom of God and the dealings of God with man is broken into systems. Listen carefully. The system of God's dealing with man represents his modus operandi. 
as far as certain outcomes are desired are we together now it is part of the assignment of every leader in partnership every pastor businessman career person every believer in partnership with the holy spirit to explore the systems of god and understand the keys that he has apportioned to be responsible for certain outcomes in our lives please listen not every key opens every door that you are holding keys does not mean the door you want will open no we have been given the keys of the kingdom and we must know the systems that are responsible please pay attention to what i'm telling you there is a system in the dealing of god with men that is responsible for longevity there is a system that is responsible for the impartation of the life and the power of God in a man. There is a system that is responsible for wealth and prosperity. There is a system that is responsible for favor. There is a system that is responsible for defense. That when men and the powers of darkness rise against a man, there is a system a man can operate with God that can build a shield of resistance mysteriously you walk out of things that should have killed you as though the devil does not exist it is not luck everybody says systems if you do not understand the systems of god give us ephesians chapter 4 please ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened listen carefully having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated taken apart from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them when the understanding of a man is darkened you can be alienated from the reality of God's life so you will read it in the Bible you will even confess it but your life will be barren of that experience because there is a system are we together on earth there is a system by which men grow correct from a baby to an adult there is a system there is a system with which a woman is able to take child and give birth there is even a time range for it so it is in the realm of the spirit the ignorance of believers not just in knowing what we want we all know what we want but the keys of the kingdom designed by the wisdom of god to deliver that result so what we do in the body of christ largely is guesswork we apply at random several scriptural principles that we hope will address our issues of concern and the danger is if and when they do address that issue we cannot reproduce it because we do not know which one exactly produce the result so we call the blood of Jesus we invoke the name of Jesus we call the word we sow seeds we take communion and then we do all kinds of things we pray and then we get the result now the danger is we cannot teach another person there is an exact system that is responsible for what you and I are looking for tonight mm -hmm. are we together you heard the testimonies of some of our loved ones here look at this kind of results there is something responsible the Bible says they are life to those who find them and then health to their flesh it didn't say they are life to Christians no no that understanding that because it is in the Bible your life should experience it is deception and fallacy between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is your participation engaging the systems of God accordingly that's what is responsible for the delivery of the outcomes in our lives I've said it here again Satan is never afraid of the word read your Bible there is no place in scripture that records that Satan is afraid of the word Satan is afraid of your understanding your partnership with the word is the dread of Satan in fact the Bible says speaking about the sower and the soils it says that Satan cometh immediately and takes the word and the word does not react on him because the word in itself is barren and unprofitable it takes the faith and the understanding of the believers to give life to the word to now be able to speak the word of God is a bank of potentials activated through faith and your faith is the summation of your understanding proven by your steps 
first your understanding then your steps your understanding is evidence of your conviction are we together now I've spent my life studying the systems of the kingdom and I still do Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 please help us let's rush tonight Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the foolish weary at how many it didn't say where is one from the group every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city it didn't say there is no road he knoweth not 60 verse 1 of isaiah says arise shine amplified says arise from the frustration and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light arise shine why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has capacity to cause you to arise please hear me believers God is not a charmer he's not a magician there is always an engaging of the systems of God fear is a product of ignorance or inaccurate understanding of the systems of God the antidote to fear is not just casting the spirit away there is the spirit of fear but there is there are activities that results to fear naturally an understanding of the systems of God so this is what we desire but do we know do you know for instance believers that in the economy of God with men there is a way that men can receive bad things that leave them we call it restoration we all know and we all agree that restoration is a possibility in God's dealings with man but do you understand the system there is an exact spiritual system that produces that outcome are we together now yes there is a system scattered in scripture that distinguishes men and lifts them up listen let me tell you something the word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles in making the outcome happen the word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles the summation of what the Bible calls faith is first understanding this is where the challenge is our understanding being faulty being incomplete being unfruitful so it is incapable of delivering the results that we expect and therein lies the power of darkness leveraging on our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God and then we mock God there are people who have come with several situations tonight and within seconds we've not been away for over a week I mean it's, it's been a tour right from the west down to the south and here and it's been an amazing time watching all the miracles and the things that have happened you know I have wondered wondered just like those who receive I have wondered at how easy it is to get God's hand having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when our obedience is complete ignorance truly empowers Satan in fact there is a class of the demonic cadre called rulers of darkness their dominion is activated whenever there is no light we must contend for accurate understanding there is no one in school to sponsor me i am alone so you say but there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where he can raise strangers he said it strangers will feed your flock keep the promise but find out the system that commits God to making it an epistle in your life here and now otherwise we will continue to mock ourselves again and again God said it but we may never see it in our lives someone listening to me here inside outside across the nations of the earth will need to realize that this is the key it's not God it is our lack of participation to produce the outcomes that we desire say amen this is the second reason why 
many people remain perpetually in failure and defeat let me give us something isaiah 31 is a scripture that blessed me so much and i think it will bless you verse 1 to 3 those who depend on the strength of men the strategies of men listen to what the bible says war to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many it says and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not to the holy one of israel neither seek their god let's go to verse 3 verse 3 please it says now these egyptians that you claim are so formidable they are men oh are we together now it says and not god and their horses are flesh there is a limit to which they can defend you he says and not spirit when the Lord shall stretch out his hands listen both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is helped now this is an ancient language shall also fall down two of them shall do what if God does not help you and your destiny helper together so it is never from men i've taught you this all every good and perfect gift comes from above through men to you from god through men to you so your prayer is not to men the god of all flesh that can manipulate things according to his will from god through men to you when it becomes from men that begins the cycle of tragedy from your life anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me I know we say yes sir but we don't believe it it shows on our our desperation calling the attention of men you are my last hope Sam if you don't pick my call I'm dead that's a man who does not know God because he said if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up things that should not do that God is only limited by how much we trust him. His wisdom is multifaceted. Has the capacity to invent new formulas of communicating your breakthrough to you. Your assignment is to trust him enough. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean rolls to the Lord of Lords. Never, never allow your appetite or your perception of the ability of men and human strategies to help you to outrun and push away the fact that you know God is faithful. I know you're a businessman and I've read every business book, but by and large, it's only a channel. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. I know you went to school, but let me tell you something. If God does not speak a word on your behalf, your certificate can be a piece of paper on this earth. As sad as the recession is, it has brought so many arrogant people to their knees. Men who think God is limited by their perceptions and whatever it is. No. God is mighty. He's not scratching his head in heaven wondering what to do with believers. His wisdom is so infinite, it reinvents itself to manipulate answers to men, regardless of the circumstances. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, time's The next time a man tells you I will not help you you are in trouble thank him don't cry go back to God and say Lord how many men did you say are on earth six billion let your wisdom your infinite wisdom that can raise up stones 
stones. That can raise up stones to praise and glorify him. I will never trust the strategy of men above God. I love and know and fear him too much to be that foolish. That a man comes and says, look, hey, Jimmy, tomorrow I'm going to change your life. Just because you have five billion in your account, that's a joke. Is it not until that man wakes up from the bed in the morning? Listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not teaching you dishonor. Remember, I've taught you the gift of men. I'm showing you the depravity, the falsehood, the waste of time that is committed in making men God. This God is a mighty God. Your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity. Pressure on his integrity. That's what brought some of you here from so far. You have put pressure on his integrity. I assure you he will not disappoint you. Hallelujah. All through scripture, the Bible is full of God's promises. And then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God. God cannot assume you trust him. So he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you. It would be costly for me to take this water and then tell Pastor Jimmy, I want to force you to take No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Jimmy, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. Your picking the water is proof that one, you are thirsty, but number two, that you believe I'm not a liar. Now, if you want to come and pick this water, and the protocol stops you it, you have you have obeyed you have put pressure on my own integrity and so i come in and i tell him no i instructed him he's acting based on his trust in me he's not acting based on rebellion the problem is never the devil the problem is our fear alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them number three quickly the third reason why people experience failure defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions demonic oppressions first john chapter 5 verse 19 demonic oppressions we live in a world that is full of demonic activities and the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints. It says, and we know that we are of God. Read on. And how many? Not Nigeria. The whole world does what? Lieth in wickedness. Like you say, my child is lying on a carpet. The whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness. The condition to be a potential victim of this is that you are born of a woman the moment you arrive here that's all are we together now you know several people say who did i offend that all this trouble is it? all those things are they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain the whole world lieth in wickedness the moment jesus was born as a baby all of a sudden when a star came at the east Herod, the spirit of the Antichrist, began to walk in Herod and they wanted to kill Jesus. Even in heaven, there was war. He said, There was war in heaven. A woman, I saw a mystery in heaven. A woman was about to give birth to a child, and a dragon came and stood, waiting to eat the child. And the Bible says, The earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It tells you the location. In It takes faith and the operation of God's word for it to be settled in your life. It is settled in heaven. Hence, the dexterity and the order in heaven. But on earth, there are still forces contending with the purposes of God. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, please give it to us. Verse 12. 
Ephesians 6 and then verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities listen I want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence that message has blessed so many people I was talking with my mother Jimmy today and uh, my mother almost made me cry and she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time being angry with men fighting men because every man every man is just it is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit you have to know this it is never about your in-law it is never about your son it is never about your daughter no no wasting time on men will make you hate people you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own Peter tried to rebuke Jesus that you will not die on the cross he said Satan get thee behind me and he said Peter Satan desired Peter said which Satan we came here together Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will look for them too are we together he says but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places Paul himself was not he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock God here's a revelation God gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter Satan is writing to God he uses men like the canvas and says I am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when I trust God and I still come and I'm sick and the sickness is eating me it's not about you Satan does not even care he is trying to use men the highest of God's creation to make a statement to the heavens that bowing down you did not do I am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me and so when God finds a witness men and women who represent the systems of God who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of God in the earth they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men watch this so this lady come darling this lady has cancer it's eating her up that's a letter from Satan it is never about the cancer Satan does not care he is, he is contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him by reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this God begins to rejoice not because he just became powerful finally an intercourse between need and supply listen every time hear me every time God heals a man it was not that night he planned to heal the man he had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace the unction level it takes to produce that miracle and when two of them collide there must be a miracle I've taught you something listen oh let me not go ahead of myself I'm enjoying myself here very seriously listen this lady cancer now I've prayed for her and she's not healed that's a double message you see that that message now her faith begins to fail her because she's saying but but I mean does that mean my situation is different and she goes to God Lord I love you I love you but then she begins to think and somebody comes to say look there's one man somewhere oh, I'm advising you all this your Jesus thing me too I'm a Christian I gave my life to Christ before you were born I'm only telling you this what is there to just go carry one goat I can even give you half of the money you see it is a statement Satan uses men their situations is like the pen he writes a letter to heaven watch the ones you claim you died for barren of your faithfulness yet you study from scripture 
I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, not you see it back for bread. Then Satan comes to write a letter. That's why God is searching for men. He's not searching for men to give them titles. He's finding space in the earth through men. So that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest. Now, if this lady supernaturally gets healed, like the gentleman, look at the guy that, 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 um, that came back to life. 25 people immediately. 25 people because a dead body came back to life. You can't deny that. Are we together? That's a statement. Brothers and sisters, tonight, my father will write another statement. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. See, God does not just write anyhow. He writes in a way that he must force you to read it. His miracles are notable. Ask Moses. He made the bush to burn in such a way Moses could not ignore it. That's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting and all of a sudden doors opening, 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 opening. Hallelujah. Opening. That's the God we serve. So when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed, that's the last reason for a miracle. Miracles are a message. It's a reply from God back to men and to the gates of hell. I am still faithful. The lion, the lamb, my benevolence is still in force. I am still good. My mercy endures forever. And he uses men. Sometimes you see in his wisdom, he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge. Then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says, Satan, how about this? When you understand this, hear me. You will passionately pursue the presence and the power of God, not for fame. You are seeking to give God space. There is a statement that God needs to write to principalities and powers. They mock God in our lives. Are we together? This is what happens. Because it's difficult. Brothers and sisters, we are humans. When your life has a track record of perpetual failure, it will test your faith. And that's when Satan comes and tries to say, where is your God? You are 39 years as a lady. You have loved God all your life. No marriage. And I'm here believing my life anyhow. I'm still married, but another man still wants to add another marriage to me. Look at two of us. Brothers and sisters, they are not speaking on their own. It's a letter. So it is good to give God thanks in that situation. But it's best to give God thanks in victory. Are we together? Yeah. Thank you. Demonic forces. They exist, they are real, and they have made nonsense. First Thessalonians 2:18. Please let's hurry up. First Thessalonians 2:18. The apostle was speaking, and he opened us up to something very, very profound. I want us to read together. Ready? One to read. Wherefore we would have come to you, even I, your breakthrough. But what happened? Help me please. Once and again, your breakthrough would have come to you. Your prayers answered already. But Satan hindered us. Satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men. Satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men. Are we together now? It's part of the reasons why we pray. We pray because in the place of prayer, we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness. We enforce the victory of Christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. The last reason, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Why do people experience limitations in their lives? They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. This is the last reason. 
the last reason i've given you four reasons why people remain in perpetual defeat they trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 we celebrate the anointing of the holy spirit in this place not just the ministry of the spirit as you know we're on a series the holy spirit he said finally my brethren haven't told you all these other things finally my brethren be strong in the lord be strong in the lord and in the power of his the word might there means his resources his resources the power that comes with his resources there are arsenals there are mysteries there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make god god and the bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again psalm 66 verse 3 psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god it says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the anointing of the holy spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him God's authorization the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability listen the capacity to produce God's result God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace we trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God. And since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry, I do not need the anointing. No, brothers and sisters, hear me. The anointing, the anointing, I've said it again. I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is god's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students i was teaching them when we we're doing pneumatology i was teaching them about the anointing and i said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father he's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness 
the sentiments the ethno-religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me that will be your testimony is God's ability is God's ability working in me the anointing will always produce supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub he said if I use Beelzebub the prince of demons by whom do your fathers their fathers were casting out devils they fraternized with the realm of the spirit access powers higher than a human power and were producing results that statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know yes yes in this day and age brothers and sisters the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes you don't just tell somebody be healed that's arrogance without the anointing now let me show you something i've taught you this again and again but i feel like doing it let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me please look at this because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing i want you to learn this please by the grace of God and by the privilege of his grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, Ejimi, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results that's the anointing listen if I try to lift this it doesn't mean I don't have energy it means the energy dissipated per unit time is small so I need another agency to assist me is that true believers this is how it is so it is not that the name of Jesus is there is not working it is not that the anointing is not working the situation that you are confronted with this is why grace and peace is multiplied because there are situations that defy that current level so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you why is it multiplied how God anointed Jesus Acts 10 30 look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if 
Dangote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him because it is within his capacity are we together if koinonia decides to give everybody here one one million we'll have a problem somewhere correct not because we don't have money it is the limit of our capacity so it's not when when this guy has a problem it's like a shop there is a dimension of anointing required to solve it so when you come to help him it's not just that you laid hands he may even fall down but the money is short what do you need more 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 of the same thing not more of a different thing more of what the same thing so Benihin can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair you see that's the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is no brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selman I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God and we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry that's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith he switches to the covenant that that man has with him and it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men are we together? tonight let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys yes yes it doesn't take time it only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it learn this about the anointing the anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great I tell you you ask the Lord my work with God is as if I don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that I'm working with God and I seek to get I have seen them in dreams and visions and I did not see this current level we are trusting God for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely 
lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet oh, oh, oh. Oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hala prakato sete kata banda shabra gada bala. Shikete para toska prata skala bala. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na na. Shikada bala kata prakato shikete. Shibres kete shala banda kata. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You 
One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. are you praying take me to a new level let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence let there be an evidence let there be a testimony Nina Ka Wiabo Sarki Salama Nina Ka Wiabo be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now, at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil 
standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough I command that you leave right now in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus one two three go now go now bring them out shake it take a inside and outside that fire of the Holy Ghost shake it take a bring them out right now in the name of Jesus my God I see deliverances happening to people by the spirit of the living God deliverances happening to people right now right now right now bring them out please in the name of Jesus she pray take it out outside overflow one I see a ministry of angels strong ministry of angels bring them out please I come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I establish victory. Victory, I command it. Break through every force of darkness. Defying the word of the Lord. I bless the word of God upon your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, my God. I still see these breakthroughs. I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit. Listen, I'm seeing at least 17 people. 17 people, I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon you. Strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by the count of three. One, two, three. Open now. Open now. I command it. I declare it now. Now. Open doors. By the Spirit of God. Open doors. Open doors. Satan Secretary. My God. Doors opening. Over lives. Opening. Over destinies. Opening. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. and pray the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now I command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our lives. Mighty in our lives. Mighty in our
I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed. Now, supernatural speed. Shepherd Ketata, run like Elijah. I command it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now, like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys. Listen. Keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys. These keys are solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies solutions and strategies you will help me shout that name jesus again i see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of god now lord i pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing i decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three get ready now my god my god my god one two for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now, all those who come from that region, south, 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 a miracle. Now, Baton Shekete, Lepre Teketo Sumata, Lakata Praskata Bashikete, in the name of the Lord Jesus, south, south, the Spirit of the Lord brings breakthrough to men and women. You can't stand it, breakthrough, every hand in delay from the south, south. I see the hand of God strong upon men and women strong upon men and women ending captivities by the spirit of the living God hallelujah there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the lord is showing me someone please let 
let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come holy holy don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mic i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she have uh, up to now she have never got get married uh -uh. and this, this is, day she's sick this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from Mina, niger state niger state yes, thank the lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children what you have? have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all i'm looking in a vision and i'm seeing one more a baby girl after this hold my hand sir but the lord is going to i'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but i want to pray for you because the lord is saying i should release you from this hold my hand sir i bring you life in the name of jesus christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but i'm asked to pray for you I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this. You are a woman of prayer. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Look at me, ma. You love God sincerely, but many things are going around. They are scattered in your life. And you have been asking, can God come? Can God step in? Even when you were there, you were praying that prayer. I heard you praying and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you rest today. He's giving you supernatural rest. Madam, please stand up. Please stand up, ma. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? I'm in Sabon Gary. I'm still in Sabon. It's from Sabon Gary. You are coming. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you as I lay my hands on you. I want to believe. There's someone, you are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. You are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. That is, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? I'm going to pray for you. And the Lord is going to give you peace. And the Lord is going to raise people to help you. Now, sincerely speaking, I want to be honest with you. It is not within my power to stop you from getting married. I generally can only advise because you see, let me teach you something, especially as a pastor. There are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world. And when you are ministering sensitive things like this, um, they are listening and every territory has laws. Are we together now? Things are a bit flexible in Nigeria, but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying, don't marry another wife, the son can go and sue me or the ministry. So this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith. Are we together, sir? It is not within my power and I have no rights to judge you. I can only declare the counsel of God and pray for you. Um, this is very important. When you are speaking to people, although by the spirit, it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling god there is one more thing you want to tell me i'm hearing your prayers come what is it give her the mic is that true you are standing there and you are praying 
and you are saying you wish that I can call you again, there is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's marriage. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's, let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, if not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you, forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny help us. Amen. Lord, send people. Amen. You see, we must pray that God will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers. It's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child, as if she never trained anybody. That's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late. Now, according to scripture, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But sadly, being as the situation is, we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones. A woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again. I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat. That God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help. Mama, don't cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. See me after the service, madam. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord change your life, change your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the one with the child? Please come. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. What's wrong with him? He's running temperature this evening. Just this evening? Yes, sir. But he has been having persistent cough. 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 Let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for this, your dear son. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now. And for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain Amen. from Amen. your life. Amen. This is what he's saying. Please stand up. Please stand up, man. That he's rolling away reproach. You see, as God speaks to one person, he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone. It doesn't mean that we have to call you. The time will not let that happen. Are we together now? For instance, madam, are you from Kaduna? Who is from Kaduna? Uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person, a woman. There is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now. This is a young lady now. I, I, a, a mama, like elderly woman. There's a woman who came here from Kaduna. Not a young lady, please. I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly. Mommy, look at me. You have gone through so much pain. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, it's your children that will wipe your tears. It's your children that will wipe your tears. May the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Why is she here? You are the Deeper Life um, lady. You are, you are a member of Deeper Life. Are you sure? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I pray that you do a miracle in her life right now. Put your hand on your stomach. God is taking something away from your stomach now. I curse it. Something is leaving you now as I hold your hands. You are even surprised. Even you, you would not have known that there's something there. I'm seeing like a malignant growth, something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be over now in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. 
very bad friends and I'm still seeing it again I don't know where that guy is and the Lord is asking that we pray for him again you see all these gentlemen you have to be careful it's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station hold my hands I pray for you the Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural restoration sir I pray for you you will not I don't know what is making I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in Jesus name I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ Hasana Hasana we're going to pray for the sick now we have to be very fast Hasana Hassan, I'm seeing someone with the name Hassana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hassana, whether you're inside, outside. Hassana from Kogi State. Hassana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hassana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration restoration the lord is saying i should stretch my hands on you in the name of jesus may you be a benefactor of the mercy of god the mercy of the living god the mercy of the living god the mercy of the living god the mercy yes it's all right if your names are hasana the mercy of the living god your name too your name is hasana interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain, repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Let the oppression in your family end now. This girl's family has gone through all kinds of things. This is Koinonia. I bring you the life and power that is in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what we're going to do. Please listen very carefully. Um, you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people. I wish that we had all the time, but we have to work with time. And... Um, we are going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. 
whether you are inside or outside if you are trusting God listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from this particular cases if you are trusting God for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random I want you to come in I want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here i want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you're outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we're going to minister to you now it'll be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um, have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is uh, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Oh, <laughs> 
Legate por nosotros. Please help them, whether you are an usher or not. Lembra do usher. Gada balarabosh. Jeke teke teke te balarabosh. Shapra dosia. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. Jebros kaparu shapra di salarush. Shabros katabran dega dego shalabradiasha Engre to susa brigadia It's a call to your spirit man It's a call to your spirit man This is not for everybody It's a call to your spirit man If it's your call you will hear it 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 You must hear it If it's your call you will hear it Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. It's not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me take off my shoes we're going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and i'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the god of heaven who answers prayers jesus jesus the son of the living god now arise O lord Come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles.
name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speedy testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of jesus most high the son of the living god every request here i say again is turned into a testimony Jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because Believers are used to charismatism, falling down, rolling, and so on and so forth. We many times downplay the place of prophecy. Prophecy is very powerful. And I've taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by His Spirit to bring comfort, to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of god makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer I'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know God and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of God this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now please lift your hands I want to pray for you oh come oh come me man and ran some captivity Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ran some captivity Israel. Rejoice. Rejoice. For Emmanuel has come to us, his Israel. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare right now, every door that has been closed over anyone here, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be 
the Bible says have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as Zion travails he says she shall give birth a son I decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and I command that you must have a manifestation now I decree it I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost manifested blessings manifested miracles hallelujah I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything labor for everything I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life he said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I prophesy to you may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you I decree it I declare it. may an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says Elijah told Ahab saddle your ass and run for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Zatos where your current level of achievement cannot take you I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years 
alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taking for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employers and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God worry. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the results now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus This is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us i discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from god through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of god upon your life as a man of god as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are i command them to come into your life now Hallelujah. Listen. 
I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that god can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. I'm praying specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called I give life to that which is dying now I give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service June you will return here ten times better literally ten times better hallelujah please lift your hands I want to release something there are people here you love God I gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of god it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors who are trusting god for certain dimensions of grace it can manifest as anything wisdom strategies supernatural grace the grace for performance i want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Shabo Sikata. there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of jesus i open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit i pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership 
supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ but thou shall remember the Lord thy God it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly It says you shall call on Aaron and his sons he said and you shall take your honor and give it honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguished I pray for you from today that grace for honor I release it upon your life may you be honored at the gates of your destiny may you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward tonight may their prayers be answered We believe in family in this place no matter how lifted you are if your family is not lifted he said as for me and my house we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness tonight in the name of Jesus supernatural lifting for every family 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 and finally I pray for you in a way you have never seen whoever looks at your face I compel them to favor you listen the Bible says Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her for as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me I have seen this thing work in my life I prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you I compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. 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 So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet you are holy thou art worthy there is none 
like you for in your presence that is where we must be Lord we bow as we enter the throne room we cast ourselves down at your feet Come on, Shabbat the Lord. He alone is worthy. You are holy. Thou art holy. There is none like you. For in your presence, that is where we must be. For in your presence, Lord, in your presence, that is where. your presence that's truly where I must be it's in your presence that is where I must be the presence of God makes a road to board the presence of God stops bread from decay that is where I must be for he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and i will say of the lord thou art my strong my strength my fortress my rock For there is safety in your presence There are miracles in your presence There's deliverance in your presence I'm changed in your presence I become wiser in your presence I am strengthened in your presence In your presence, that is where I must be. This is part of Koinonia, it's a culture of worship. In your presence, that is where I must be. In your presence, that is where. I must be beautiful you are wonderful you be you are glorious faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be, you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, just the voices. My God, beautiful you are, wonderful you've been, you are glorious, you're faithful in all your ways, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, beautiful you are. Wow. 
Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, everyone, for it falls like the dew of heaven. Rain upon your people, O oh God. Rain upon your people. Fall like fire. Quicken your people to a higher realm of power. A higher realm of insight, a higher realm of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, let it cause your eyes to see, your ears to hear. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. When you are exposed to the presence and the glory of his majesty then you are changed it's an atmosphere it's not just a person it's an atmosphere this is why you can be touched from anywhere it's an atmosphere it's a circumference of glory that anyone that dares to plunge into it will experience a tangible change a quickening in your mind not every revelation can be taught some are byproducts of his glory it's a quickening of the spirit that's why we are exposed it's not just about falling down it's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit drink of that atmosphere it will change you Hallelujah. of demons not in this place we believe in the works of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah you will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. 
For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people. In the name above all names, at the count of three. One, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this row. That devil, I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. For your name is holy. You are holy. Holy Lord. The power of God touches the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness. Holy, holy are you, Lord. devil of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Hallelujah. the Jeremiah I'm seeing. There is another Jeremiah. It's taller than you. Jeremiah. If you're Jeremiah, you can come out here. The Lord has a word for Jeremiah. It's a guy. It could be your son name. I don't know. But you're taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came out, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone, don't sit down.
Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave I alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been, we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth. Just to announce. Don't just rejoice for nothing. If it's not your auntie, we're not lying here. Don't clap. If your auntie is not pregnant, the child will not jump out of the air. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause. And now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit that had been revealed to the church especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions. Hallelujah. And that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God. And have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances. Hallelujah. And the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony. And so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, the gospel of grace. Number two. The gospel of faith, or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three. What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity and we're in the sixth one tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit you don't want to miss this teaching this is a solid teaching tonight the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit hallelujah In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Panham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Doway, um, people like... Um, uh, you know um, what's his name sorry yes Maria Woodward Ita and several people had carried the fire and the power of the spirit they had seen miracles people like Amphi McPherson the woman who would do stretcher only meetings so they had seen the revivals of the spirit but then this gentleman would be teaching and then racism was very strong in the western world hallelujah and there was a black one-eyed man one of his eye wasn't too good to worsen the case he was black and then he was one-eyed 
And so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures, just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside, the only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. It took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, that was the exact same way the flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them on that street called Azusa and it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit that men in mass hitherto it used to be single individuals all right and then people come to receive but now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit solid power they did impossible things in mass and that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country, one continent to another. Hallelujah. Then somehow it fell in Africa also. And our fathers caught that fire. Hallelujah. Great men who walked in power. Not many of them are known. Alongside with men like Apostle Babalola. We only know him because he's a founder of a ministry. But there were many more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men and women who caught this fire. Suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of God. And they saw that the Holy Ghost can take hold of a man. Such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man. Hallelujah. They saw ordinary men doing the deeds of God. Men who you couldn't stand close to them. Hallelujah. Meters away from them you were under the anointing. And they were exhibiting the character of another being. Just like a demon would possess a man. And the man would assume the character of that demon. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit began to give them insight. And that sparked a dimension of power in the church. Like we have never seen. And through the years... Especially in Nigeria, we had great men and women. Now listen, don't confuse just the working of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move. The charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit. It wasn't just healing alone. Are you listening to me? It was a demonstration of the character of the spirit. Men who did things, it wasn't just healing the sick on the street. Their presence... Devils cried at their presence. They did all kinds of, they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously. Hallelujah. They would get up from a seat, you come and sit back there and devils will leave. It was an awesome display of the spirit. It opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense... The things of the spirit. There are ministries that you see one Jew, all right? One Jew. If he's not around, nothing happens. But there are ministries that even if you call five people and say, just go out, they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit. That's a charismatic move. Hallelujah. The word charismatic comes from the Greek word charis, grace. A demonstration of the grace of God upon a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And a lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Where is the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2. It was that move of the Spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking. When I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in so much trembling. Verse 4, 1, to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in, the sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me. That must be opened up to the body. The spirit of power. That the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer. To wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. 4. Sorry. 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy. Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Are you there? Want to read? For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said, for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? 
because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation, that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience, just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom in number one words, but number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders breakthroughs these are the visible manifestations of the glory of god please let me tell you something the manifestation of the glory of god is not a cloud it's not some mist listen the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience are you listening to me say kingdom experience kingdom experience is not just in words if i ask you now what was the first message that was preached when you came for koinonia you cannot even remember but if i ask you tell me one remarkable experience you say ah i remember i brought one brother that was just shouting i won't keep quiet five minutes later that guy was praying in tongues that's an experience are you listening to me people can forget talk and words but an experience initiates them into the reality of anything hallelujah this is why when you go to a herbalist he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe. And a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman, come sir, just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter with the power of god no withdrawal symptoms this guy does not have appetite for liquor again doesn't have appetite for smoking again there is an experience are you listening to me this guy if you ask him to preach he will tell you his experience you know why many believers do not have messages we lack the experience of the kingdom life hallelujah this is why we borrow messages from youtube google all kinds of things Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough. 
to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, uh, to what? He made the sea to... He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to... But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? They these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching, you are sleeping. They say, mix this with this, you are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit that God can transform a man, but there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God it's not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many, it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience. And we camp around there. And the more we read theological books, we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of God. And you see someone tells you, I've been a theologian for the past 10 years. There's nothing you will tell me in this Bible that I will not see. But you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger. He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. They give you every well-prepared sermon but with no power to change people. Not even salvation. And you hear a lot of preachers say now, with this message, if you know you are not born again, I pray that as you go back home, the Lord will help you to do something about this message. Can, can you imagine? This is supposed to be an experience. Imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit. Imagine Jake's for God's sake comes up and preaches, I mean with power, and says, Jesus, save them, he healed them, he delivered them. So now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid tangible experience and he came and met you making noise one PA here, one protocol here one protocol there and you stood and you were making noise and his native doctor calls him and said please come back just forget about these noise makers hallelujah Christianity begun supernaturally with power, a woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws, dies and brings himself back to life. 
the entire span of the Christian experience is rooted not just in word but in power the demonstration of power now please listen because I'm, I'm soon oh you will enjoy this message tonight believe me whenever I say power many church folks all you just think about is somebody falling down let's do it come two people one usher one somebody pastor Alpha, you are an usher come come sir do you know how to fall down all right just fall down no 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 hold on you are going to okay are you ready now oh yeah fall down this is what the church calls power shame on us this is not what i'm calling power so if you are thinking i'm talking of falling down no that's not you are you are in for a shocker this is not power for many people this is just church jamboree because demons can do that a powerless christianity will not advance the kingdom of god many of you are not here because of our nice messages Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim, remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up, you don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby like my little sister that came and shared testimony here and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water. Burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men. You think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sent them. He said go in my name. He said as you go. Go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, he didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen. The fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages. Criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. Hallelujah. We 
we have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary how can a man just get healed the lady shared a testimony now how can an ovarian cyst disappear some of you are just saying Jare, go and test with a real doctor you see it that's that's a problem with a lot of people you never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere but how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, you say, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God. And God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs. And Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs. Demonstrations of solid power. today in the church in Nigeria learn how to speak your English know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together may God increase and bless you but let me tell you the truth when it comes to real transformation if you want to be part of what God is doing you need more than that brother demons don't hear English there's one language they understand the Bible says through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you not through the greatness of your English, through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance. They say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy. I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week. This guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say, my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. Amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now, don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that... Um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? The ministry is not to seats. Are you listening to me? 
all through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven, he always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1, 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, it's how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happened. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were. For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, their people are being delivered. They say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again, one to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their let's, see, let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, he's not an evangelist. You should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. And permitted not the demons to speak. Because they knew him. Hallelujah. 
Now, verse 37, he had to be running away from people. And when they had found him, they said unto him, what? All men seek for you. In other words, Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, the, a harbor is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you, every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39. I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him, and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecured men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for a real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. Their ushers are standing eyeing one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers, come and see the man of power. You are not a real man of power. Because when Benihin is coming to Nigeria, all the newspapers beg for an audience. What is wrong with you? You are running where God has not sent you. Powerless Christians who will not humble themselves and listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus was begging. And say, don't tell anybody. 
Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say, God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. Bah. I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means for someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia? You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks or they don't have anything to do with their lives for the kingdom of God is not in the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power John sent he said go and tell Jesus go and ask him are you the one to come it was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom i see a dove he is the lamb he's the one that said behold the lamb now john was under pressure and he said go and ask this guy in other words i expect a level of demonstration now i'm in the prison i've not seen it is he the one and the moment they spoke to jesus we'll read that later on jesus just looked at them and said watch me he healed the sick cleansed the lepers healed people and said go and tell john what you have seen in other words what in your law should be the character of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32. Of chapter 3. Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number one, and he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude, the mountain multitude, the seaside multitude, everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I'll show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over, everybody's looking nobody fell down they just said this word jerry this guy should go and sit down hallelujah miracles draw the people and then jesus saves them the biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous whenever there is an outpouring of miracles an outpouring of signs wonders breakthrough genuine breakthrough that people come in and they receive the touch the tangible hand of god transformation in their lives their families their finances their health their understanding their passion for god then the kingdom has come hallelujah Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person says, we are being so they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that will say, hmm. And that's just because they have a heart for God. 
But when one crippled person lifts his crutch, every sleeper will wake up. Sleep will disappear one time. Hallelujah. When a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down. Let me tell you something. The next day, you will have to beg for a bigger venue. Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Renard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven notably sick people were there. He said by the next day, the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people. News. News. Let me tell you something. Genuine news does not need GSM to spread. Genuine, if it's genuine news, you just hold on. For instance, if they say your accommodation is open this night, ladies, many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him and this guy cannot sleep again he's calling my old mother my uh, uh, sweetheart or my honey or my sugar and your old mother say hey, hey the demonstration of the kingdom when two of them hold their hands and come to church your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice hallelujah say i believe in miracles say it i believe in miracles I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. satabalia, And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, this is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village. Work out kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? He say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Kapatalabaya. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. Are you the last person sitting here? Hmm. What kind of life is that? 
you look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye say me let's ask who is this guy well is this guy well see we need a church with genuine authentic power hallelujah the miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive christ that's why after the miracle service when we make altar calls there are some brothers you see coming out you know it's god that brought this one the way the guy is even coming out he's even surprised what is bringing me out and he's still coming you see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out of course is the power it's called anakazo the compelling power of the spirit hallelujah but the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles you center your ministry around jesus this is where my preaching of the balance starts because you see the miraculous is not a teaching it's a demonstration you just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power, and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet people do not come to the genuine knowledge of jesus christ you did not glorify god i don't care how charismatic it was so you don't center your ministry around jesus around miracles but jesus he said if i be lifted up if i not if wheelchairs be lifted up not if crutches be lifted up not if tumors be lifted up not if dead people be lifted up if i jesus the son of the living god be lifted up i will draw all men so miracles are tools are you listening to me they are tools that bring people to jesus christ if they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of jesus christ then something was wrong hallelujah but now we see that there is what an error in the church still among the charismatics that an emphasis has switched away from who jesus christ i want to ask you a question how many times have you had preachers mention the name of jesus in many pulpits for many people it was last year and they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first food. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hour about the man. They just saw slow motion. He stands and heals the sick. And does every kind of thing he wants to do. And then he does everything. And at the end of it, nobody says anything about Jesus. And people cheer the man and he's so happy. Jesus is absent. Hallelujah. Jesus must become the center of our ministry. Not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus, say Jesus is the center of my life and everything that I do. Say Jesus is the center in Koinonia. Yes, may God forbid the day that we'll forget about Jesus and start marketing ourselves. I'm marketing power. I'm marketing Joshua Selman. I'm marketing all kinds of things. May God forbid that day. Where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said, I will draw. Hallelujah. 
There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authentic power, authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members. And for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you how many members that here? Small boy. Why can I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, here we can sit now. Say, I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He said he caught one principle. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of, any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God, say, let's go straight to the word. They say, ah, no falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one. We have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article, you read the junk fire yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article. Praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned 
and then after that there are different kinds of oil and according to this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back the most popular oil right now is called seeing oil they wash your eyes with it and you just look you can see everything hallelujah everything that's why you see every man just looks you are this you who just got married and he moves in dramatic accuracy because with that in two weeks he can triple the membership because the truth is people have needs are you listening to me people have genuine needs when they see real solutions they will go they will go they have genuine needs and this man is receiving money of course if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed ah can't he take half of it and say pastor i would have gone to india now you have helped me let me reduce your board in the ministry if if you one day you can make five million is that not a lucrative business answer me and then he buys another one rub it on his eyes these men sleep with women and do all kinds of things minutes to their their ministration to maintain some of these powers please listen to me hallelujah then the next one they call it do as i say aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are anything they ask them to do the newspaper one time recorded how that some people members went to church naked remember the article some people don't read newspaper hallelujah members imagine a father and a mother say are you ready now kids let's go that's what happened madness in the body of christ they enter the church naked no see when i say naked i'm not talking of jesus of nazareth kind of naked naked can you imagine everybody in koinonia here naked what is wrong with us yes but that's what happened that cannot be normal the spirit of god is not an idiot we have misrepresented the holy spirit to the to the world god is not god is not a daft person please let's not make jesus christ look like a stupid person hallelujah and when you get that kind of oil you can do anything to anybody that's why you can see a man who buy his house they just cut the scissors of the house next week is the pastor that packed inside brother what happened they say seed now i'm not saying there's nothing wrong when when you see genuine things you celebrate them manipulation and witchcraft i was told of a man of god that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members the guy just pressed hey hi. and the lady said what is wrong now he said you will die now and she called her brother in uk he said let's give this man the land oh. they gave the guy land he erected a structure quick on it now they are they are in the court the land is worth 80 million the man manipulated them into sowing it to him what if that man were your father you will not enjoy for years Kenna, because one man of god has come to manipulate your your the death the financial destiny of the family are you listening to me and then the next oil is specifically for ladies hallelujah according to the article they say it's called touch and follow i have been amazed at the the vulnerability of many ladies to men of god it looks like they don't men don't have wombs they don't get pregnant so a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable you see a man of god just looks at her they come for conferences and welfare the ladies that serve them after serving water like this you just look at her and write as if god spoke later they come to meet in the hotel room man of god your message was powerful the next thing that lady won't come out of that hotel room again what, what kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church i was speaking with jakes the other day i said i don't know how people reason aside from the fear of god 
I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, ah, you preached this against us and you ran away. Your, your prayer now will be let like nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. This is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own. It's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. The Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything that passing scared, you are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry, you better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. You see a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God. And say, oh Lord my God, by your mercies would you help me. It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something. There must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To walk in true holiness. And walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. Not to defile myself. By the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, I receive grace to say no to sin, to say no to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up, please. We are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power Above and against immorality. Say in the name of Jesus. No man. No pastor. No prophet. No apostle. Would deceive me. And mislead me. To abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive strength. To run with the spirit of Elijah. Away. From every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you hear it as it is. 
Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings. Because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for koinonia. Say you will see. It's pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor. Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preaches and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace. Because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh, sir, the oil on your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual. He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit together with the man's hand. He held his hand. He said, no way. Not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading and come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit 
that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here innocently who became victims of some of these people? The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus and all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. So could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. The, you will carry your money like this. They are paying your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, are, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rob that oil. Oh. You must rob it. They said something is wrong. The next thing, he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say, how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says, sorry, I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go and make new fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. Are you following me now? Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. You can buy your iPad but carry a hard copy Bible and come for koinonia with it. Hard copy Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPads, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket and the next thing you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. Are you listening to me? There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get to the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything. Carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Next week, I'll consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they sent royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. 
and you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation to the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I'll share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women, to be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them, but I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God. The word of God. Building us. Making us strong. Giving us wisdom. Say Lord I open myself. To the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on pray. Say Lord. Move through me. Let me become a manifestation. Of the glory. In miracles. In signs. In wonders. Pray. Say Lord I open up myself. To heal the sick. To cast out devils. That there be a demonstration. Of the spirit through my life. Pray, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and He has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor, to set the captives free, to deliver the oppressed, to raise the banner of authentic power, genuine power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, walk through me do impossible things through my life lift your hands and say these hands are blessed say these hands heal the sick these hands will liberate nations these hands will liberate families lift your hands to the heavens say lord these hands will open up the gates of nations these hands will bring the power of god to bear these hands let throne Christ say Lord move through these hands move through this body rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory rededicate your body say Lord move through my body every fiber of my cell a superconductor of power I open the gates of healing the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners, or the sick, or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse. And out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacot. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria, our territory, our Jerusalem. We pray, let there be authentic power upon our pulpit, oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams, angelic encounters, reveal yourself to these men, oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every work of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walked, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my rose was with butter, there is a way God will honor you that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not ENI, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. 
I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat his souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree. But I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say, I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to walk in authentic power. We don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth. We want to be relevant to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before before I take the announcement, if you're here, please listen, inside and outside. If you're here, and you know that you've never truly made a commitment, please listen to me. This is a serious thing. You've never made a genuine commitment for the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have come to church, you may be a worker, you may be a pastor, or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you know that you have derailed from the things of God for whatever reason. We do not condemn you. This is a place of love. But tonight, could it be that Jesus brought you to this place to begin a new journey? Right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I know some of you were invited by others. For some of you, you have been struggling and the Lord is telling you this is it. Find rest. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Right now, I want you to leave your seat and walk out here. We want to pray for you. You are either giving your heart to the Lord for the first time. Don't be ashamed. Or you are making a real commitment. Appreciate them. They are coming. 
from inside and outside appreciates them the lord is speaking to you don't be ashamed leave your seat wherever you are and come out and make a genuine commitment for jesus christ that you're going to start i won't tell you to get born again because you will get a car although the car will come i won't lie to you that you are getting born again because of a house is an authentic christian experience those of you outside i believe there are still a, a few more people the lord jesus is talking to you celebrate salvation learn to celebrate the miracle of salvation if i be lifted up it doesn't matter what addictions what habits the bible says come on to me all ye that are heavy you are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest the lord is calling you appreciate them they are still coming appreciate them we are still coming let heaven know that this is a place of salvation not just a place of miracles thank god for the miracles thank god for the miracles but that the holy ghost will convict men of sin of righteousness and of judgment hallelujah thank you so much brothers and sisters for making this glorious decision some of you you are giving your heart to the lord for the first time some of you are making up your mind and saying enough is enough i want to begin a real journey we congratulate you the bible says as many as will come he will in no wise cast away hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front and pray after me as loud as you can say lord jesus i come before you unable to help myself but today i accept that i'm a sinner and i receive eternal life into my spirit i accept the gift of righteousness and i declare according to your word that i'm born again in the name of jesus holy spirit come and live in me i repent of my old ways from today i have a genuine passion towards god and the things of his kingdom i'm a real christian i begin a real christian experience in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah let me pray for you father we commit these ones to you you gave us the ministry of reconciliation and lord i pray by the power of the spirit that these ones you will deliver them right now every manifestation of satan over your life i set you free from it right now in the name of the lord jesus every habit whatever it is that you have struggled with i command that it leaves you right now from today i declare you born again i declare that your sins are forgiven sister i cast out that devil come out of her in the name of jesus that addiction leaves your salvation must be authentic out of her in the name of jesus for if any man be in christ the new creation in the name of the lord jesus a new journey for you of a real genuine practical christian experience by the power of the holy spirit holy ghost i pray that you take over their lives in a powerful way no backsliding in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah please listen to me pastor jakes is going to have a word with you people hallelujah you just follow the usher right down you will have your details and will follow you up hallelujah thank you so much for making this great decision when you get born again you are free and you are delivered let your salvation leave a mark and an experience that you will not forget no going back to your old ways you will need to break away from some associations are you listening to me call them and tell them you are born again tell them you are born again and that jesus is lord of your life just follow the ushers please appreciate them house of god appreciate them. hallelujah appreciate them you will never recover from the power and the influence of salvation if you're coming here for the first time please inside and outside just keep clapping i'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly we want to bless and speak over your life do that quickly do that quickly we're out of time sorry for being so late appreciate them as they come please jump on your feet come out quickly inside and outside
There are many of you who wait for you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. He brought you to change your life. He brought you to alter your destiny. In the name of Jesus, there's fire upon this mountain that is burning. You will never be the same again. Never be the same again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. Thank you. Please keep coming. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? You will never be the same. You will live with a fire in your spirit. Many of you will be open up to visions and revelations. Many of you will hunger for the word like never before. In the name of Jesus. As we pray for you, everyone here is anointed. And if we bless you, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and prophesy. Some of them came with burdens. I'd like you to pray. Pray. Cast out every devil. Cast out sickness. Lord, live an experience in their life that will confirm the fact that they met God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. We bless you with a hunger for God.